Hey guys, today I have some basically top secret guitar technique footage to share with you guys today. Now what I mean by that is uh, my buddy Deacon Lacrosse, fantastic guitar player, uh, he's actually been on the channel before, but uh, recently, a couple weeks ago, I was helping him shoot a music video. You know, I, I did the camera work and editing and I, I shot the music video for him for this instrumental song that he has just released. And afterwards, uh, we were hanging out and he was just, you know, playing through some licks and uh, going through some, some picking patterns that he really likes. And his technique is so, so mind-blowing. Uh, basically, as he was playing this stuff, I asked him if he could explain some of the thought processes behind his technique and how he was able to develop such a just blazing fast but also extremely clean and controlled picking style. So in this video footage, uh, it's a little bit grainy because we just shot it in his house, but he goes through and he explains how he developed uh, this really, really super controlled, very, very fast and accurate uh, picking technique and it's really really cool and he shares some really interesting points of uh, Sort of the thought process behind how he developed it and I think it's gonna be really helpful for uh, I mean it's helpful for me But it's helpful. I think for anybody who's interested in developing a really great uh, Picking technique, so let's go ahead and check out this footage and also guys I'm gonna put links down below for the new music video that he, that he and I were working on so definitely check that out It's really really cool uh, looks great. I have to say uh, but also a really cool song with some really cool guitar parts in there. So here's the footage and check out the links below. See you guys. Yeah. And in particular, you have a way where you each note is very, very even, right? And consistency okay. sure. and the amount sure. of power in your picking. Okay. So, can you tell me a little bit about how you developed that? You said it was a lot of repetition, but what else? Uh, so, like, consistency is like everything has like the same intensity, correct? Right. right. So, like, when, okay, so like when you're doing rolls, uh, anything. It, it doesn't matter if you have distortion on or not. Just distortion masks a lot of control, just so everybody knows. Um, because I can play something soft or something hard, and you do not really hear a difference. There's a little bit of timbre control, a little. But if you're going to practice something like this, I would not recommend practicing with distortion. So consistency okay. stems from understanding what dynamics are. Right. Because a consistent thing is to keep all the dynamics in one even envelope. Right? Okay. So what we're controlling at this point is we're controlling what's loud and what's not. And you're That's, saying that practicing with a clean setting lets you hear that more. A clean setting yeah. would work, or even better, uh, nothing. Oh, just acoustic. Honestly, yeah. Okay. Uh, even an electric guitar, acoustically, uh, yeah. because you can hear... You can hear the differences in the intensity. Okay. It doesn't matter where. You can hear the differences. And you can control that. You should be able to control something like that. So, but again, with distortion, soft and hard, soft doesn't really make it. Doesn't really make it a difference in quality. The only thing that you're gonna get from the distortion is you're gonna get that sound that um, a lot of metal guitar players would like to have is that consistent like sound. So when you're doing, you know. You know consistent like everything is the same quality and that's just metal players so you're just sitting there yeah everything is like the same quality intensity and that's just a lot of control you're just basically instead of using dynamics uh in the sense of like pop where things move in and out to make people dance and make people feel something you're just keeping your 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 envelope of control here 
Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, well, the way that I practiced that was completely repetitive. Uh, it was mind-numbing. What I did is, uh, and I'll do it with and without distortion so you can kind of hear what I'm talking about. What I did is I took, at first, like one note. And I tried to make the timing in between my picks the same. And I tried to make the amount of strength that I picked it with. Now, strength doesn't come from holding the pick hard. It does not. I actually just was talking with uh, Max and uh, like to be able to knock the pick around in my fingers like this. I don't really hold the pick that heavy. I really don't. So it doesn't come from holding the pick this much. It just comes from the intensity and the, the uh, uh, what would you call it, like the, just the forwardness that you use in the pick down on the string, you know what I mean? So it's like I'm not squeezing the pick harder to get a harder tone. I'm just being factual with what I'm doing, mm -hmm. if that makes Very sense. Very deli deliberate. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Okay. Very deliberate. It's hard to kind of... Uh, think of the right word for that but yes yeah, so basically you can take one note doesn't matter where I would recommend on like like one of the higher middle strings like the B or the, the, the G string would work because then you can hear the differences like without this on there you can hear like the differences you know you can hear what you're going for whereas like the lower strings are kind of rattly and kind of buzzy whereas like the higher middle strings they kind of have a clarity to them that yeah. you can kind of hear better so like when you're doing this just take one note or two you know one note is what I started with now that's palm muted so without being palm muted you're attempting to try and get every single note the same volume you don't want to get like you don't want to be all over the place you just want to concentrate on getting that same intensity and you want to train it so that when you start getting faster every single note has that intensity still controlling it because a lot of people when they when they play faster they lose a lot of control that's a common uh, not problem but a common uh, roadblock that people will hit if you're trying to when you're trying to play faster a lot of roadblocks people hit is to get faster they feel like they have to lose control and that's really bad, and that's really hard to, to, to get around. But for consistency's sake, I would just take a riff, like... You'll notice on that one, it's all the same strength, all the same volume, all the same uh, timing ap apart from one another, so it wasn't... It wasn't weird, it wasn't something... It was consistent. Metal is consistency. <laughs> It's like you want to just practice that and as you get faster and faster maintain that control and be true to yourself if you made a mistake don't just blow through it mm -hmm. you're never you have, to, you have to rely on yourself to keep yourself in check so that's what i would do i just sat there whether it's with a metronome or if you have a really good internal clock uh tempo keeper then you can just keep it <laughs> practicing that you just keep it controlled the best that you possibly can and once you feel comfortable with that maybe start moving it around to adjacent strings but you know you know what I mean so and then, yeah and then another thing that you can kind of work on to is uh, between slow and fast like gradually increasing your tempo that has to stay consistent too you know what I mean? So if you start... You have to keep those consistent as well. So keep that in check too. So being able to control yourself that much and have this much window of um, moving around this because no control means you have so much that you could potentially do or not do. Having control means you have this much and you control this much, always. So having that much control and allowing yourself to break free of that is so much easier than having all this no control and trying to control it. Mm -hmm. So I actually spent the better half of two years practicing robotic control. Okay. Like So I, I wanted to make sure that I was to the point where it was almost like annoying to listen to because it was too perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not sitting here trying to boast and be like, I'm the most perfectly something whatever. I'm not, no. But... I wanted that goal to happen. 
Yeah. So I wanted it to be that whenever somebody was like, here, play a role to this metronome, that I was never going to be wrong. Right. You know what I mean? But that's what I'm saying. So I had that much level of control, and then I was able to bring it back to a human place. And then with that, I started developing a style. You know, and that's where that happens. You go beyond your point, and then you relax somewhere. And mm -hmm. then that relaxed point is you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sure. So, so it's like you're always going to have this circle or this foundation that is ultimately what you are as a player, but you have to be able to control what's around that too. <laughs>